Ed is uh, the leader of the Climate Party and William is the leader of the Social Democratic Party. They're both with me now. Gentlemen, thank you very much indeed for making time uh, this afternoon. I wonder if you just heard what David in Glasgow was saying there. I wonder, William, first of all, if you could give me your perspective because uh, there is this idea that David has put forward, our caller, David, saying that actually what's the point because maybe there just isn't that much left and maybe the outlay is too expensive anyway. Well, there's 500 um, billion barrels, so there's quite a lot left. And the key question, I think our UK energy policy should be evidence-based and reality-based. And the reality is that oil and gas uh, will do, does form a massive part of our energy mix now, and it will do uh, for the foreseeable future, certainly in the next few decades. And if we're going to have a path to renewables, then the reality is, whether you like it or not, oil and gas is part of that path. Now, the question I'd ask uh, the people that are against drilling in the uh, North Sea is why they prefer to lug oil from the United States or to consume oil from other jurisdictions like Norway. We have a massive bilateral trade deficit with Norway. Why they prefer foreign oil and gas uh, in preference to our own. It makes no sense at all. And I want people to wake up about the trade deficit. It's not just about... Um, uh, the environmental question. The trade deficit is a major, major problem. We've got, you know, 100 billion plus trade deficit, which means we're getting poorer every year. We own less and owe more in debt. And you've got to think about that. So you just focus, focus. It's oil and gas is part of the energy mix and the ramp uh, to renewables. Until basically, uh, Peter, until we've built the nuclear power stations which they seem very slow to get up and running. Until we've built a full fleet of nuclear power stations to provide base load in this country, you're going to need to have oil and gas, I'm afraid, and that's the reality. Okay. I prefer British oil and gas rather than imported foreign oil and gas. Okay, Ed Gamble, that's a point, isn't it? Because even if we get to net zero by 2050, uh, you're the leader of the Climate Party, oil and gas is still going to be part of our energy outlay, isn't it? Oh. Absolutely not. I mean, I think we're all barking up the wrong tree. I think the uh, the caller, David, when he came in, had absolutely the right idea that we shouldn't be going ahead with the extra drilling at Raysbank. Um, it doesn't add anything to our energy security, and it takes us on a regressive sort of anti-forward-looking um, policy. We've got to try and grip this new industrial revolution that's coming, and part of that is focusing ourselves on what needs to be done. We already know that our renewables are coming in cheaper than oil and gas in any case. Um, and at some point, the, the amount of renewables going into the system has dropped the price, the wholesale price, to almost zero. So it's wildly better for us to invest in that. But not only that, it's part of this forward looking. We need to see Britain as trying to become a new um, industrial power in the world in the clean industrial revolution. And to take a regressive policy of starting to open up new oil and gas fields at the same time as having a prime minister who's talking about 25% of our energy generation in the 2050s but, will but, come but from that, oil. That, that's not just, uh, Ed, with respect, that's not just Rishi Sunak. That's the Independent Climate Change Committee that advises government. Oh, on the basis of the current path that we're on. So what we're doing is at the moment we've got this ridiculous path where we stay at the back of the new clean industrial revolution. We don't get to the point of onshoring industry and manufacturing back into this country. And let's just note that we have destroyed our manufacturing base over the last decades. We dropped from manufacturing being 25% of our GDP in the 1970s to it being under 10% now. And even just in the last 15 years, we dropped in terms of manufacturing capability around the world from the seventh place in, in the world down to the ninth. We are on a downward spiral and backwards looking um, MPs and backwards looking governments that are looking at keeping oil and gas pumping when we should be embracing the new technologies, getting ahead of everybody else, unleashing British innovation and investment, and that's got to be the way to go. William, Why on earth do people keep looking at this regressive stuff? William, it's regressive, it's backward looking, it's a downward spiral, it doesn't add anything to our energy security. What do you make of that? I don't agree with it. I think that's a mistaken view, and it's not a reality-based view. Why not? Uh, I've got the fig well because I've got the figures in front of me. We we today, uh, nine, uh, oil and gas is the dominant fuel source for transportation. Ninety-five percent of it today, and by 2030, it'll still be 70 percent, right? So you'll still be using it for 70 percent of your transportation needs. Domestic heating and cooking, 70 percent gas now. 
the, the people that are keen on this switch to renewables, I'm keen on it. I'm keen on it. I think there's a pathway to it, but you can't do, you don't have a pathway unless you have base load. Uh, the, your other person on this panel should answer the question: How are you going to get your base load from to keep the lights uh, on? Unless you've, got, it takes it'll take the government fifteen to twenty years to get this nuclear domestic nuclear industry okay, re revitalized. Ed, I'll, I'll yeah. come back to you, William. But perhaps we can get Ed to answer that question. Yeah, no, um, absolutely. I mean, just let me preface it with that: just one sentence on it's about focus bring forward our net zero target by 20 years. Let's get ahead of the pack. When we do that, we start to focus on the right things. So when you look at baseload, not only has nuclear already been mentioned, but we have both wave and um, tidal power, which we have ignored in this country for about the last 30 years, not putting investment into it. It's something that is continuously moving and happening and could be providing some of that baseload. But also, if you have the right focus, you get on with the innovation in battery technology, in hydro, in green hydrogen, and you get to the place where you can actually have a base load that will always be available because you've innovated, you've invested, and you've seen the future rather than have just given up based on the projected figures, which are projected out of history. They're not projected out of a new British mission to get ahead of everybody else and do the innovation we need. William, final, <laughs> final word to you on this. I'm, I'm, listen, I'm with you on base load. We, the SDB has a very strong policy to reinvigorate uh, nuclear power in this country. You need base load. That's the reality. What people on the other side are not seeing, and they're not being realistic, is that we don't have it now. Whether you have it with wave power or nuclear or whatever, you need it. On the renewable side, we're becoming a, a, a wind a power a superpower actually on the pipeline of that it's already happened but it's variable if the wind doesn't blow you don't get the power and get this this is the reality until you have baseload domestically serviced you will need to import uh, gas for that purpose and 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 you know you either get the gas and oil here or you import it you know what the single highest the single biggest import from the USA was in 2021 crude oil absolutely insane, wrecks our balance of payments and makes us poorer. Okay, both gentlemen, thank you very much indeed. That was Ed Gamble, who is uh, the leader of the Climate Party, and William Clausen, who is leader of the Social Democratic Party. Thank you.